Hey everybody, I'm Matthew Laria, and you're watching the Faith for Life broadcast. Let's pray and release faith over today's broadcast, and then we'll get right into the Word. Father, we do thank you again today, Lord, for your Word. Lord, we love your Word. We ask you today for revelation of it. We ask you today for grace and help to receive it, to put it into practice, and to see it work in our lives. And Lord, I release my faith today over everybody watching the broadcast, and I thank you for ministering to them today through this broadcast in a great and in a mighty way. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, a few episodes back on the broadcast, we started a series that we're calling To the End. And in this teaching, we are discussing one of the most important principles of faith that you could ever learn as a believer. And that is the principle of not just starting in faith, but staying in faith until you see what God promised you come to pass in your life. And let's go back over to Matthew 24 and look at verse 13 there again. This has been our foundation text uh, in this teaching. Matthew 24 and in verse 13, praise God. Jesus said there, He that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. He that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Matthew 10, 22 again, he says, He that endures to the end shall be saved. Hebrews 3, 6. These have been our, all of our foundation scriptures for this teaching. I want to read them to you again. Hebrews 3, 6 says, Christ as a son over his own house, whose house we are if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of hope firm unto the end. Verse 14, for we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our con confidence steadfast unto the end. Revelation 2.25, Jesus said, that which you have already, hold fast till I come. And he that overcomes and keeps my works unto the end, to him will I give power over nations. 1 Peter 1.13, gird up the loins of your mind and be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the appearing of Jesus Christ. And then Hebrews 6, 11 says, We desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. And so, friend, you can see just by the use of that phrase that this reality should set upon you. That just because you start in faith doesn't mean you're going to stay in faith. Everybody who starts in faith doesn't stay in faith. There are a whole bunch of people that start out believing God for things, but they don't stick with it to the end. And if this wasn't an issue, God wouldn't have gave, given us so many verses encouraging us, stick with it to the end. Stay with it to the end. Hold fast to your confidence to the end. And so you and I need to be aware of this reality and we need to be ever mindful of, qu of, of quitting in the middle. We want to be on guard against stopping before we get to the end. And when you're believing God for something, you want to believe until you see it come to pass in your life. That is the end. Now, last time on the broadcast, we uh, talked about that on the way to the end... The way to the end is littered with opportunities to be moved. It's littered with peril and with adversity. And so when you start out uh, believing God for something and you start out on that pathway to get to the full manifestation of it, to the full enjoyment of what God promised you, when you start out to go to the end, that pathway is littered with opportunities and adversity and all kinds of things that want to move you. The devil wants to get you to quit in the middle. He wants to get you to let go. In fact, his only hope is to get you out of faith because if you stay in faith, victory is a certainty. Outside of faith, victory is an impossibility. And so hell exhausts every resource 
When you start believing God for something, hell exhausts every resource to get you to just quit it. Circumstances and reports and feelings and lies and pressure, anything it can throw at you to get you to quit before the end. But friend, here's what you need to know. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you and the greater one lives on the inside of you. And so no matter what the devil throws at you, you have the ability to go on right past it, to persevere through it and get to the end and see what God promised you come to pass in your life. Praise the Lord. Now let's go to Hebrews chapter 10. And uh, we're going to do a, a lot of reading today in Hebrews chapter 10. Um, if you're going to make it to the end, you need some perseverance. You need some patience. You need some endurance to deal with all of these things that come to you to move you when you're on the way to the end. And that's what Hebrews chapter 10 brings out, and we're going to read some of that now. Hebrews 10, 23 says this, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. The word hold fast there means to retain, to keep firm possession of. Let us hold fast to the profession of our faith without wavering, the word uh, wavering there means unmoved or firm. Now, why would the Lord have to tell us to hold fast to the profession of our faith? Why would He have to tell us to keep firm possession of it? See, friend, right here from reading that verse, you, you have to deduct, <laughs> deduce that something is coming to move you. Why would God have to tell us to hold fast to our faith if the enemy wasn't trying to move us out of faith? If the enemy wasn't trying to get our faith from us? The reason the Lord's telling you hold fast to it and, and hold fast to it firm, unmoved, is because someone's trying to get it from you. And you need to hold on tight to it. Because the devil is desperate to move you out of faith. And I, I friend, I, I'm, I'm believing that you're hearing this clear, clear this morning. Hell will exhaust every resource to get you out of faith. Because if it can't get you out of faith, it cannot, hell cannot keep you from winning. Hell cannot keep you from victory. Once you get in faith, you immediately become a problem for the devil. Praise God. Do you remember when uh, David went down and uh, he was supposed to just be checking on the battle. And it was right before he defeated Goliath. And David came down uh, to, the, to see the men and give them some refreshments and things like that. And he started asking questions about, you know, uh, who's this Philistine? And he, he said, I'll go fight him. And as soon as David said, I'll go fight him, his brother accused him of being in pride. And then Saul, this great expert soldier, told him, you'll never be able to do it. And then he got out there, and as soon as he got out there to face Goliath, Goliath started telling, how, telling David how I'm going to defeat you, I'm going to kill you, I'm going to feed your body to the birds. Well, why was there so much pressure? Why did his brother accuse him of being pride? Why is Saul telling him he can't? Why is Goliath trying to get fear in David? Because the devil knew that faith is on the scene. And if I don't get David out of faith, I'm going down in this battle. And because he couldn't move David out of faith, he couldn't keep David from enjoying victory. See, David held fast to his faith when his brother accused him of being in pride, when Saul told him he couldn't do it, and when Goliath was breathing these fiery threatenings at him about how I'm going to feed your carcass to the fowls of the air, none of that moved David because he held fast to his faith. And that's why he enjoyed victory. Um, uh, keep going here. Verse 24 says, Let us consider one another to provoke one another to love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. For if we sin willfully, after that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. 
there remains no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Verse 29, of how much more sore a punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who has trodden underfoot the Son of God and has counted his blood, the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified, an unholy thing, and has done despite under the Spirit of grace. We know him that has said, Vengeance belongs to me. I will recompense, says the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Now, I wanted to read you all those verses. I'm going to read some more. But these scriptures are talking specifically about people leaving the faith, like we talked about on the first episode, leaving the Christian faith. Um, you can be moved out of the faith. That will cost you your salvation. And you can be moved out of faith for your situation. That won't cost you your salvation, but that will cost you your victory in that situation. The way Peter was when he was walking on the water to go to Jesus, he was moved out of faith. Didn't cost him his salvation, cost him his victory in that situation. And in these scriptures, uh, in verse 25, and uh, it's talking about how we need to exhort one another and not forsake the assembling of ourselves together, but exhort one another, the scripture says. And we're supposed to do this the more as we see the day approaching. And it's talking about the return of Jesus. As we see that day approaching, we need to exhort, that word exhort means we need to strengthen each other more and more. Why? Because as Jesus' return nears, the temptation and pressure from the enemy to, for believers to leave the faith is going to increase. The scripture talks about in 2 Thessalonians how before Jesus returns, there's going to come a great, a great falling away. And so there's going to be a bunch of people who were believers that willful, willfully reject the Lord in the last days. And so this verse is saying as His return nears, make sure you're strengthening each other more and more every day. Why? Because if you're, if you're strong... You'll hold on to your faith and you won't be moved and let go of it. Praise God. And so often, uh, the reason that so many are moved out of faith and so easily moved is because they are so weak. And I know we don't want to uh, hear it maybe like that, friend. But the reason stuff moves you and me is because we weren't strong enough to absorb the blow of adversity and not be moved by it. That's why you were moved. Proverbs 24.10 says this, If you faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. It didn't say if you faint in the day of adversity, it's because the adversity was so great it said you fainted in the day of adversity because your strength was so small. And a big reason why people come out of faith is just because they're so weak. They weren't strong. And see, you need strength to not be moved. And this is why he was encouraging them to exhort each other. Strengthen each other. Why? so that you will hold fast to your faith and not let go of it and be moved like some of these others are, are, were moved out of the faith. This is why the strengthening and the exhorting was so necessary, so that you won't be moved. If you're weak, you're going to be moved. And so you need to be strong so that you won't be moved. Keep reading. Verse 32 says this, But call to remembrance the former days, in which after you were illuminated, after you were saved, you endured a great fight of afflictions. Great fight means a struggle, a hard trial, 
of hardship, pain, emotion, suffering, partly while you were made a gazing stock, both by reproaches and afflictions, that, that's talking about pressure and trouble, and partly while you became companions of them that were so used, for you had compassion on me and my bonds, and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that you have in heaven a better and enduring substance. And so these people encountered so much pressure. The scripture says that they were a, a, a spectacle or a gazing stock. They are experiencing all this pressure to let go, to leave the faith. Let me read you some of it again. Afflictions, uh, a great fight, struggle, hardship, pain. They're made a gazing stock. Uh, they were experiencing reproaches and afflictions, all this kind of stuff. And the people he's talking to stayed in faith in the middle of all that stuff. Praise God. He said in verse 35, Cast not away therefore your confidence, which has a great recompense of reward. What's he saying? Don't quit now. You've made it this far. Now's not the time to let go of your confidence. Now's your time to hold fast to it. Verse 36, now this is the verse we wanted to look at today. For you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. The word patience there means endurance, constancy, fortitude, continuance, perseverance. You have need of patience that after you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise. Uh, say it out loud, friend. I need patience. Say it again. I need patience so that I can enjoy God's promise. I need patience if I'm going to enjoy God's promise. Now, patience here is um, not being moved. When you're talking about patience, you're talking about those words, perseverance, endurance, um, those kinds of things. What it is, is patience is not being moved. Patience is, I like to say it like this, patience is toughness. It's being able, when you're on the way to the end, it's being able to take a punch and not let it knock you out. This is what patience is. It's toughness. It's being able to take a punch and not be moved. And anytime you go to receive something from God, stuff will try to move you. And the only way to receive is to not be moved. And to do that, you need to be able to take a punch. You need to have some patience. You need to have some toughness. In other words, when I'm on the way to the end, if the first blow of adversity knocks me out and causes me to throw my hands up in the air and go, I just don't know why it's happening. I guess I'm never going to receive what God wants from me. You're too weak. You're not tough. You need some patience because on the way to the end, stuff's going to come to try to move you. The devil's going to shoot fiery darts at you. You might get a bad report. The circumstances might not change as quickly as you want them to, well, what are you going to do when all those punches are being thrown at you? You need some toughness. We need to stop being such babies on the way to the end. We need to, uh, praise God, uh, be tougher, be stronger, be able to take the punch and keep going and not let that punch cause us to quit. This is what patience is. And what did the scripture say? It says, if you're going to receive what God promised you, it is, a, it is a requirement. Patience is a requirement. It is not optional. You need it. Why do I need it? Why do I need it, God? You have need of patience that you might obtain the promise. Why do I need it? Because God knows on the way to the end, you're going to encounter some pressure. You have an adversary that wants to move you out of faith. And so you're going to need some patience on the way to the end. You're going to need to be able to take a punch on the way to the end. Praise God. You have need of patience that after you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise. Verse 37, For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and he will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul will have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them that draw back unto perdition, but of them 
that believe to the saving of the soul. What's he talking about when he's talking about people that draw back? He's talking about people that can't take a punch, that are, that are far, far too bothered by the adversity that comes on the way to the end. You can't let any of that stuff bother you. You got to keep going to the end. And so you need some patience. You need some toughness. The fight of faith is not for the faint of heart. <laughs> Praise God. The pathway to the end. It's not for the weak. It's not for the uh, easily move. No, you need some patience. You need some toughness because you, the, the way to the end might take more than a day or a week or a month or a few months or a few years. And the only thing that's going to get you over when adversity comes on the way to the end is you got some patience in you and on you and on your holster. You can pull out some patience. You can say, I'm going to persevere. I'm going to be moved. I know how to take a punch. My high school football coach used to say, two of the most important things a player can have is the ability to give a hit and the ability to take a hit. <laughs> Praise God. I think that'll preach. One of the most important things you can have as a believer is the ability to deliver the blow to the devil and the ability to be able to absorb one of his fiery darts and quench them and not be moved by them. Come on, say it again. I need patience. See, friends, you can't be a baby on the way to the end. You can't be bothered just because you got one bad report. So what? What do you think was going to happen on the way to the end? <laughs> do you think the devil is just going to say, oh, you want to believe God for more uh, finances, for healing, whatever it is, for victory, for growth in your ministry? Okay, I'll just get out of your way and let you do it. No, 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 no. No, once you've heard from God about increase and victory for your life, the enemy comes immediately to try to steal that word and get you out of faith. And so you know it's coming on the way to the end. And so when you hit some adversity, you should just go, yeah, I figured you'd be coming. I'm not moved by you. I'm not bothered by you. I'm going to keep going all the way to the end until I see what God promised me come to pass in my life. But to do that, you need some patience. You need some toughness. I want to read this verse to you in the Message Bible in closing. In Hebrews 10, starting in verse 32, this is the Message Bible. It says, Remember those early days after you first saw the light? Those were the hard times, kicked around in public, targets of every kind of abuse, some days it was you, other days it was your friends. If some friends went to prison, you stuck by them. If some enemies, enemies broke in and seized your goods, you let them go with a smile, knowing they couldn't touch your real treasure. Nothing they did bothered you. Nothing set you back. So don't throw it all away now. You were sure of yourselves then. It's still a sure thing. But you need to stick it out. Staying with God's plan so you'll be there for the promised completion. It won't be long now. He's on the way and he'll show up most any minute. But anyone who is right with me thrives on loyal trust. If he cuts and runs, I won't be very happy. But we are not quitters who lose out. Oh no, we'll stay with it and survive trusting all the way. Praise God. I like how that reads in the Message Bible. And friend, that is some toughness. And so if you're believing for healing today, don't be surprised if your body got a little worse. That's just what you encounter on the way to the end. Praise God. If you're believing God for finances today, don't be shocked that, you know, an unexpected bill came in the mail. Or maybe you got a pay cut at work. What did you think was going to happen on the way to the end? These are the things that can try to happen on the way to the end. Fear can try to come on you. Pressure can try to come. That should tell you, I'm on the right path. I'm on the path to the end. Because that's where things like this happen. It happens on the way to seeing what God promised me come to pass. These kinds of things happen. This pressure is just a sign. I'm on the right track. I'm going the right way. The devil's scared in his boots that I'm going to stay in faith and see this come to pass. Let it be an encouragement to you. And then get some toughness. Furrow your brow, praise God, if you need to. <laughs> Might be better to put a smile on your face. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad and know that God promised it, so it'll come to pass. I'm going to stick with it. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we do thank you for grace and strength and help to stick with 
faith, to stick with your word, to stick with the fight of faith. And Lord, we just ask you today, help us to develop in patience and develop, develop some toughness and help us to not be babies and to be so easily moved by bad reports or pressure. Help us to stick with it, to stay with it, and to see what you said come to pass in our lives. We do thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Friend, thank you so much for watching today's broadcast. Hey, don't forget to come back next time. We're going to close out this series that we're calling To The End. And next time on the broadcast, I'm going to give you three big keys that will help you stick with it to the end. And you don't want to miss it. We'll see you then. Hey, we got a free offer going on right now at the ministry. I'd like to send you a free copy of my book, Victory in Troubled Times. In this book, I give you five keys from the Word of God that will help you overcome any challenge that you face in life. Friend, this is a powerful book. It's a powerful tool, and I want to get it into your hands. And so if you'll just email the ministry, info at mam.tv, give us your name and mailing address, we will ship this book out to you at no charge. And right now we're going to throw in a copy of our mini book, Faith Declarations. In this book, you will find declarations of faith for almost any area of your life. These things are so powerful to speak over your life daily. And this will also be a tremendous blessing to you. And so, hey, I want to get both of these into your hands at no charge. All you got to do is email the ministry info at mam.tv give us your name and mailing address and we will send them out to you and they will be a blessing in your life praise the lord thank you for watching the faith for life broadcast go to mam.tv to download the free study notes from today's broadcast you can also request your free copy of our mini book faith declarations. In this book, you'll find declarations from the Word of God that will feed your faith and help you experience victory in your life. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. In this life, we will encounter challenges, but through the Word of God, we can experience victory over every challenge. In Matthew's book, Victory in Troubled Times, he gives us five keys to experience victory in the midst of adversity. Order your copy today at mam.tv or on Amazon. Today's broadcast was made possible by the partners of Matthew Alaria Ministries and the members of North Smoke Church. Go to mam.tv to become a partner today and help us take the message of faith to this generation.